Namaste, viewers. Welcome to Jaipur Dialogue USA. And, uh, you know, this is January 1st, so it is incumbent upon me to wish all of you, the entire world, the entire humanity, Naya Saal Ki Shubh Kamnaye. Ki ye Naya Saal Jo Hai Hum Sabo Ke Liye Pichle Saal Se Achcha Ho. Yehi Hamari Ichcha Hai. Par Aaj Ki Charcha Jo Hum Karenge, Is Me Hamara Ek Disclosure Kar Rao Mein, Ki Ye Jo Hum Paanch Do Or Vekti Vishes Aayenge Abhi, Aditya Satsangi Or Sharad Mohan Ji, Desh Kapoor Ji To Yaha Aayewe Hain, Or Utsav Chakravarti Ji Bhi Aayewe Hain. To Hum Jo Hain, Original Team Hai Satology Ke The Five. So, आज हमने जयपुर डायलॉग यूएसए पे द फाइव इंडियन अमेरिकन्स हम जो है इस बात की चर्चा करेंगे कि ये क्या हो रहा है अच्छा इस तारीफ की बात ये है कि ये हम सब एक दूसरे को अच्छी तरह से जानते हैं देश कपूर जी एक दृष्टिकोण मीडियम चलाते हैं सोशल मीडिया डीप रिसर्च और बहुत सारा शोध करके बात करते हैं तो इनके शोध और इनके सारा रहस्य जो खोलते हैं बड़ा आनंद आता है इफ यू डोंट नो प्लीज लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब दैट उत्सव चक्रवर्ती जी एक योद्धा हैं मेरी तरह मैं उनको अपनी तरह योद्धा मानता हूं हम किताबें नहीं लिखते हैं हम सिर्फ युद्ध के मैदान में उतर के युद्ध ग्रस्त हो जाते हैं आदित्य सत्संगी जी को तो आप लोग जानते हैं उनसे परिचय है उन्होंने कितनी ही किताबें लिखी हैं और शरद मोहन जी भी बहुत सारी किताबें लिख चुके हैं वो जब आएंगे तो अपने किताबों की चर्चा करेंगे लेकिन शुरुआत करने के पहले आप सबों का स्वागत है प्लीज लाइक सब्सक्राइब एंड सपोर्ट आवर चैनल गिव अस द फीडबैक दैट्स व्हाट मेक्स अस बेटर दैट्स आवर एंडेवर टू मेक अम बेटर एंड द फीडबैक इज नॉट दैट प्रोग्राम इज नाइस बट व्हाट वी कुड हैव डन बेटर व्हाट वी नीड नॉट डू सो योर ओपिनियंस वैल्यू एंड वी रिस्पेक्ट दैट तो तो देश जी आपसे रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि बिफोर वी जंप ऑन टू द टॉपिक यू आर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम यू आर ऑन जयपुर डायलॉग यूएसए एंड कॉन्सिक्वेंटली ऑन जयपुर डायलॉग प्लीज डू इंट्रोड्यूस योरसेल्फ एंड टेल अस समथिंग अबाउट दृष्टिकोण श्योर थैंक यू विभूति जी थैंक्स फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम ऑन जयपुर डायलॉग्स दृष्टिकोण वाज एक्चुअली अ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ माय यू नो डिसएनचेंटमेंट विद द नॉर्मल मीडिया like it started off in 2005 uh like when i saw you know uh, the media calling uh, the 1984 events as hindu sikh riots i knew they weren't like it was not a hindu versus sikh it was actually a uh a massacre of one community by a political party so that's how it started now it uh, during covid it morphed into a newsletter uh, which goes out every sunday um i <clears throat> a detail around 3 to 5000 words kind of a newsletter on any one topic uh, so that's what it is so you can subscribe for free and uh, it goes off to your know, think tanks to people in US congress to industrialists so to scientists and all those folks as well so um yeah so that's uh, that's in brief like what i have been doing with dishcon that's right and uh, you know utsav ji hinduaction.org aap chala rahe hain आप यू नो बहुत सारे यू नो यू आर द मैन ऑन द स्ट्रीट एंड आई एम वेरी प्राउड ऑफ यू बिकॉज हिंदुओं में वो शक्ति नहीं होती कि हम स्ट्रीट पावर दिखा सकें और आप उस तरह से अब खड़े होते हैं तो ये जो है बहुत गर्व की बात है हम सबों के लिए कि लोग पूछते हैं कि हिंदू यूनिटी कैसे होगी आप उस हिंदू यूनिटी का एक उदाहरण हैं तो अपने हिंदू एक्शन डॉट और के बारे में थोड़ी चर्चा करें दो तीन शब्दों में दो तीन वाक्यों में फिर हम टॉपिक की तरफ चलते हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू विभूति जी नए साल की शुभकामनाएं सभी लोगों को हैप्पी न्यू ईयर हैप्पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर हिंदू डैश इज द वेबसाइट एंड वी आर एन एफर्ट टू फिल इन द गैप्स ऑफ हिंदू एडवोकेसी एंड हिंदू वॉइसेज इन अमेरिका प्राइमरीली फोकस्ड इन ऑन अमेरिका उसका कारण ये है कि देर आर अबाउट फोर एंड हाफ मिलियन अमेरिकन हिंदूज एंड वी नीड वॉइसेज and those voices need to plug in the strategic uh, uh, mistakes or gaps that we have left in the community over the last 30 years and that's what we are focused on i'm based out of washington dc and uh, get in touch with us that's wonderful so let's begin my thought process was ki har jo ek muayna karte hai na both of you are free to speak in hindi english as you wish 
uh, although majority of Jaipur Dialogue viewers are Hindi speaking, but we have tremendous amount of people who are also English speaking, so you can flow as you want in and out English, Hindi or English as you call it. <coughs> So, I want to ask you about this question in 2023. 2023, there are two or three things that you have to talk about in your research and research that you understand is very important and that it has a long-term impact in the world, especially for Bharat and America. So, there are so many things. Uh, we both ji, um, uh, 2023 may and uh, you know to take out just two or three is very tough but yes like what i'll do is i'll take uh the top two or three which yes. are in my in my that view. is the intent welcome sharad ji thank you uh sabse pehla to obviously like i think it's an elephant in the room the hamas attack uh the hamas attack in israel i think will have very long-term implications over time because israel is in a state where it wants to decimate uh, Hamas. You know, that's what it wants to do. So it won't stop until it has done that. So so Hamas attack will obviously be the uh, the number one. The number two, which uh, which I think like will be important is the de-dollarization uh, in 2023, the way it accelerated. Uh, you know, almost everyone, Iran, Russia, the BRICS, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia and all those folks, they, they joined in. So basically, uh, you know, so if I look at that, uh, that will be the most important uh, thing economic in, in the economic terms. Then there is another one which I feel will be very important is the, the, the release of chat GPT-4. implication But coming forward, going forward, like I think like that will AI, like if I take chat, chat GPT as uh, like manifestation, but like more importantly, the AI, the impact of AI in geopolitics will be huge everywhere, both in terms of getting uh, like getting the edge like against, um, you know, other countries. And, and that is uska implication you know semiconductors may and uh, you know the rest of the uh, the research the patents and everything else in uh, militarily the economically everything will be huge and we, we are not like realizing now but it will be so uh, so those are the three things in my view like i think which will impact going forward in 2024 in a big way utsav ji same question to you too so my first, uh, 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 the most important thing in my opinion that happened in 2023, uh, and I, if I were to put the top two out there, the number one would be the steady uh, weakening of what we call as the Western countries, the Western bloc. You can call it NATO. It's it's a, it's a amorphous uh, space, but the, at the core of it lies America, uh, the country we live in. And 2023 marked a steady and marked decline in the global positioning, global power of America and its surrounding bloc. Uh, I think that will have uh, that will have long-term implications. Uh, two or three very important uh, markers of that was the the way in which Russia recovered and then eventually went on to gain the upper hand in Eastern Europe. Uh, the way in which the Middle East is panning out with a significant uh, departure of lack, a loss of American hegemony in the region and the rise of Iran. And uh, another third marker of it that you will start seeing soon, it hasn't been visible so far, but it happened in 2023, is the elections in Serbia and uh, the inability of, uh, of the, the so-called freedom-loving uh, Western bloc to influence the election in the way they wanted it to. Uh, you will see the implications of it in the next couple of years. So these three markers are the biggest uh, um, sh signs of what is going to, what happened in 2023 and what's going to come. 2024, uh, elections in India, elections in America, two very important events, uh, probably going to impact the destiny of the world at least for the next 10 years, if not more. Uh, 
another very important uh, set of events that's happening and in which i agree with uh, with uh, what how dishikon is looking at it is the rise of ai and how how it's 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 beginning to reach a point where it's it's going to change the way people look at the future people look at science people look at politics and people look at media and perceptions that it creates so i think those are the key key uh, things coming up brilliant thank you very much your your very interesting perceptions you brought about about serbian elections and i would very much appreciate if you can highlight in what what way the serbian election is significant that the world doesn't know anything about and i don't think anybody talks about it please go ahead and say something on that so for those of our listeners who have who are older than uh, you know being born in 1990s they would remember that serbia in europe is a key uh... yeah please join in please join in okay uh konsol adit sangi ji has joined so please let him up thank you carry on uh, utsav ji so for those of our uh, of our listeners who have been following uh, geopolitics who have not been uh, born after the 90s uh, the, those of us who were born before that they will understand that serbia is a key country in europe in terms of defining the destiny of how the western world moves uh, if good uh, researchers of history will remember that the first world war started in serbia and uh, w- serbia was the was the place where it all began and even today uh, serbia holds a key to how the west looks at the rest of the world because serbia's choice of which side it is on uh, makes a huge difference in the geopolitics of the world and in the 1990s after the collapse of the soviet union the balkan war as it is called uh, the war that you know saved uh, bill clinton from being impeached uh, <laughs> is the war that decided how russia and the and the so called former soviet bloc ends up and how nato and the western blocs ends up so recently there were elections in serbia it has been a country that has been mostly under the influence and the hegemony of the of nato and the western uh, alliances and it has been under pressure over the last few years and as russia is gaining power globally uh, serbia has been steadily trying to move away from the western bloc from the from the influence of the western bloc and elections were held in russia uh, in serbia just a couple of uh, weeks ago and the outcome of the election was such that america and the western countries did not like what what the results were uh, they tried to do a color revolution as is now famously known as and uh, and the color revolution failed at least uh, it looks like it has failed uh, it's it's an ongoing process actually it's happening as we speak and when this uh, color revolution was happening when the street fights were going on protests were going on the serbian leadership came out publicly and said that we have information from russia that this color revolution is being organized so in a way they publicly came out and said that we are on russia's side now so that's okay. a shift that has suddenly happened so it's a shift that has happened since 1998 so you know you, you can see it's more than 23 years uh, that serbia was under, on a certain position geopolitically and it is changing i think this will have severe implications it will impact nato from from that region itself hungary and other countries in that region the, the slovak republic hungary italy and and serbia will will kind of act differently from now on within the european space and and that's going to be a big change uh, for the west oh wow that's a remarkable observation and i must compliment you for highlighting that aspect which generally we tend to ignore and we don't pay attention to so sir ji very very adit ji welcome uh, so sir ji aapka aapka swagat hai bharat ki yatra karke aap lote hain badi dur se bihar tak gaye the aap hamare apne desh apne prant to यही सवाल आपसे भी पूछेंगे कि 2023 की ऐसी क्या वारदातें हुई हैं ऐसी क्या चीजें हैं जो जिसका कि असर 2024 और आगे तक दुनिया झेलती रहेगी और उसका असर होगा ओके धन्यवाद धन्यवाद विभूति जी एंड द पैनल सॉरी 
तो uh, मुझे लगता है uh, सबसे पहले द कंट्री वेर वी लिव अमेरिका और अमेरिका का जो डेमोक्रेसी और डेमोक्रेटिक डेमोक्रेसी का जो इंडेक्स है यू नो इट हैज बीन क्वेश्चन विद द वे द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ द एक्स प्रेसिडेंट इज हैपनिंग इन दिस कंट्री दिस इज अ बिग बिग मार्कर फॉर द ग्लोबल ऑर्डर वेरी वेल चाइना फिट्स इनटू चाइनीज नरेटिव ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी डजेंट वर्क एवरीवेयर एंड अमेरिकन्स हैव गिवन अस दैट गिवन द वर्ल्ड दैट लूज Uh, access uh, or you know uh, a way where people can criticize that democrat democracy is not the only model which will fit everywhere right the way uh, american uh, state versus opposition is going on so ye ek bahut bada uh, marker hai 23 mein second thing what i feel is the is the what we haven't heard uh, is the islamist uh, angle to the entire geopolitics rise of iran i think was rightly mentioned uh, iran will be uh, creating a a a, a, a disruption in the entire uh, ecosystem of the world so iran will be a problem middle east influence of america jis tarah se wo dur ho raha hai and the way chinese have uh, filled that space uh, whether it's it's the sea route trade ya any other thing that's going to be a big big uh, uh, thing which will be a, a worry some for a lot of us because we do not know in what direction and where it will get stable uh, third to me is the nato part uh, nato is no more seen as a balancer along with america uh, uh, including the big five uh, the problem which india had with canada and, and still going on and the way america stayed uh, you know uh, bypassed india and still supported uh, canada on issues which it should have taken a balancing view just in the name of uh, uh, the big five or whatever that's that's another problem which i see so a lot of things uh, which will create a problem in in the global politics and then and then the g20 and the rise of the south and india trying to take that space so that before america and china gets in this will also decide the future road map for 2024 as far as technology is concerned yes ai will be there uh, abhi abhi uh, i cannot say ki ai kitna bada influencer hoga other than the commercial aspect of it uh, from security perspective i i have to but it is a problem but more than ai i am more worried on the wuhan type of virus uh, or the capability which could be built which could destroy the world many times even before we blink uh, so that is one area which uh, will also be a big problem area for future as far as india is concerned uh, india ka election is coming uh, america ka election is also coming uh, election is going to be a big big uh, game changer because the way france italy and to some extent uk is try, is uh, is now going to be out of nato influence and india is now uh, giving message to america aligning with russia and um, uh, not china but at least russia and to some extent iran things are very volatile and uh, it's it's right now everything is moving in moving parts kuch settle nahi hua so 2024 as i end and with the economy of america is really really in bad shape 2024 ka clarity nahi hai so road map is very very confusing and scary as well and exciting also so okay. that will be my opening statement thank you adit ji maine sawal pucha tha ki 2023 aur aapko to jaipur dialogue ke sare darshak jante hain to main aapki tareef nahi karunga abhi pustak vimochan pustak likhte hain aur sarad mohan ji bhi bahut bahut sare kitabe likh chuke hain including projected war between united states and india there was a very interesting book you wrote uh, sharad ji written please show the cover of that sharad ji that would be nice to see if you have readily available uh, adit ji aap se ye sawal puchunga main khas karke ki 2023 mein aisi kaun si harkat hui hai aur kaun sa incident or event hua hai jo aapke hisab se bahut hi important hai both in terms of its impact and implication for the world going forward to sabse pehle mujhe aapke darshakon ko pranam aur aapke ko pranam aapko utsav ji ko desh kapoor ji ko sharad mohan ji ko for uh, for being together again the famous five aapko main bata dun ki maine program ki shuruaat mein kaha tha ki hum jo panch hain ye sociology ke the five hain 
आज हम जयपुर डायलॉग से कोलैबोरेट कर रहे हैं चलिए कैरी ऑन तो एक धनुष ये सो दी वॉज ए वेरी इवेंटफुल ईयर इन मेनी वेज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री में पूरे वेस्टर्न हिपोक्रेसी अमेरिकन हिपोक्रेसी हैज कम आउट इन द ओपन कम्प्लीटली ओपन मैं ये दर्शकों को बोलना चाहता हूँ ये मेरे पर्सनल व्यू पॉइंट हैं कि जब मैंने अपनी पुस्तक लिखी थी उसके बाद से एक पुस्तक गोल्ड ग्लोरी इन गॉड में उसके बाद से मैंने रिपब्लिकन पार्टी से रिजाइन कर दिया बिकॉज आई कुड नॉट स्टैंड ओवर देयर और जब मैं इंटरनेशनल पॉलिटिक्स जब मैं देखता हूँ आज इंटरनेशनल पॉलिटिक्स में एथिक्स नहीं है वापस कंट्रोल के ऊपर वापस लड़ाई शुरू हो चुकी है ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री वॉज द बिगनिंग ऑफ द फाइट ओवर द आर्कटिक ये लोगों को ध्यान रखना चाहिए इट्स द बिगनिंग ऑफ द फाइट ओवर द आर्कटिक एंड प्रिजर्विंग द सी लेंस फॉर फ्यूचर प्रॉस्पेरिटी 2023 ट्वेंटी थ्री वॉज द ईयर डिस्पाइट यूक्रेन वॉर रशिया बिकेम द रिचेस्ट कंट्री इन द वर्ल्ड फ्रॉम द मिनरल्स पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री इज द ईयर इन विच प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी एस्टेब्लिश्ड सुप्रीमेसी ऑफ इंडियन डिप्लोमेसी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री इज द ईयर वेयर अमेरिकन हिपोक्रेसी ऑन ह्यूमन राइट्स एज वेल एज माइग्रेंट्स आर कंसर्न ब्लोन टू पीसेस बिकॉज the it is the state responsibility to control immigration and they did not control immigration as per federal laws to change demography within the united states that is the whole problem also 2023 saw the rise of indian americans in the political space through vivek ramaswamy for the first time in usa we are hearing a sane voice kahan tak jayegi pata nahi लेकिन वी आर हियरिंग ए वॉइस ऑफ रीजन जस्ट लाइक इन यू के वी सॉ द वॉइस ऑफ रीजन ऋषि सुनाक एंड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री इज ऑल्सो द ईयर इन विच इंडिया इंडियन डिप्लोमेसी फाइनली कंट्रोल द ग्लोबल डायलॉग टूडे नॉट जस्ट अमेरिक इंडियन डायलॉग इज कंट्रोल द ग्लोबल डायलॉग एस जयशंकर जी इज कंट्रोलिंग ए ग्लोबल डायलॉग टूडे और एंड 2023 में 2024 में क्या होगा हम लोग को पता नहीं किसी को भी लेकिन मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि 2023 में जो नींव पड़ी है दिस इज लुकिंग टूवर्ड्स ए ग्लोबल सनातन धर्म सिविलाइजेशन और इस्लामिज्म और क्रिश्चियनिज्म और जूडाइज्म अभी क्या हो रहा है क्रिश्चियनिज्म इज फाइटिंग अगेंस्ट इस्लामिज्म लेकिन 2024 में क्या होगा वो पता नहीं लेकिन दिस ईयर द एंटायर इस्लामिज्म वर्ल्ड इज ब्रोकन नाउ Saudi is supporting Israel Houthis are supported by Iran and this war which has been created in the Red Sea is complete creation of the west to ye 2023 ke bare mein mera vichar hai very fascinating all, all four of you have given very different and your priorities are very remarkable aapke aane ke pehle utsav ji ne serbian elections ke bare mein charcha ki thi ki how serbia is critical which i am 100% sure majority of the people did not know so coming to the second round part of it which i wanted to talk about was ki the elephant in the room is donald trump we know that colorado state secretary of state eliminated him from prohibited him from the colorado pollings republican pollings main did that interestingly michigan and california have not they say that our statute doesn't allow how is that going to play up because now you are looking at a strategy of democratic party ki jo candidate jo isko likelihood jo hai jeetne ka usko ballot pe hi mat aane do ballot pe mat aane do kisi se phasao do you see backlash for this i suspect will you know and democratic party is doing everything that they accuse trump of doing that's another other interesting part कि वो ये करेगा इलेक्शन सस्पेंड करेगा वो ऑपोजिशन को जेल में डालेगा ये करेगा सारा कुछ वो डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी कर रही है तो ये जो सवाल है कि पुटिन डूइंग टू नवल हिज ऑपोजिशन नॉट टू लेट हिम ऑन द बैलेट डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी इज डूइंग दैट टू ट्रम्प हियर वेर इज द विल ऑफ द पीपल दिस क्वेश्चन इज टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड आई ब्लिंग इन अल्फाबेटिकल ऑर्डर नाउ आदित्य जी यू गो फर्स्ट नाउ ऑन दिस थैंक यू मुझे बैक टू बैक हो गया अभी यस Uh, but so very good question vibhuti ji and uh, you know you 
brought a very important point. America is losing its leadership in the democratic world. And also, America is self-identifying itself as a constitutional republic. Now, there are bigger loopholes there in this election. The narrative that Puri Dunya, the whole world is bad, but we are the gold standard in democracy, that is falling apart by the second today. By the second. Because of the insecurity and the... left. I will never blame it on the left. Because people have to know the origin of the left. The origin of the left and the right is the church itself, Vatican church itself. So both of the left and right philosophies are coming from Vatican. If you look at the history properly, because the Vatican supported the monarch, Vatican opposed the monarch also. Both sides Vatican played. So this is a Christianism problem of left and right, number one. America is fighting. They got the independence from Church of England. But now the Roman Catholics are very large in number. So now the Catholicism versus Anglicism is the fight which is going on in USA. The Anglicistic people are the the people who are talking about neocons, the wars, the the brute force. That is the British uh, Church of English philosophy. Now this is the religious side of America which people have forgotten so far. But that has come back now. So I see in particularly in the elections where where we see Vivek Ramaswamy and other people from the Republican Party, they will do everything possible to undermine Trump because Trump played directly against the corporate military industrial complex. And so in 2020, we, we are going to see more states banning Trump in the next few weeks going forward. Maine and uh, Colorado were the beginning, but other places also will see more. Very interesting. But California and Michigan did not. Did not. Deshji, what do you think about it? So, uh, thank you, Vibhuti ji. Um, so, as far as, uh, you know, the impact of what is happening with Donald Trump is concerned, I think I have discussed this in the psychology of my psychology. Like, in my view, the like one of the greatest turning point in this election was that uh, opening remarks of Vivek Ramaswamy in the third debate. When he said, like when he uh, hauled up not just the media for focusing on fake uh, narratives, but also the division between uh, the Republicans, uh, the leadership versus the uh, the normal workers and uh, Uh, you know, registered uh, Republicans, the lay people. Because uh, he was challenging what he calls a managerial class or the deep state. So so in my view, Donald Trump was the original challenger to the deep state. Vivek Ramaswamy is a more suave, more learned, uh, more in-depth kind of, a, um, uh, you know, well-prepared challenger to that deep state. The rest of the people are the deep state. Uh, you know, it's as stark as that. So earlier on, the divisions used to be between the Democrats and the Republicans. Now that division is no more there. I think the the real division now is between the deep state and the challenges to the deep state. And that is very, very important to understand from the American politics perspective. Because whatever Donald Trump is happening with A Democrat party is hey, hey involved, but Republicans, especially the leadership, has an acquiescence bhi hai. Because otherwise, they would not be so bold enough to go and do all those things that they are doing. Now that January 6th has been you know, brought out to be uh, uh, you know, not so like, correct uh, version of what has been uh, given around, uh, like it would be my view that like going forward there would be even more um, uh, you know attempts at such things and it will be very very important for this country because see jo january 6 ko hua that you know as even vivek ramaswamy said that will turn out to be a stroll in the park uh, in terms of what will what can happen 
now given this entire uh, rupture that has happened within the american polity because society jo hai see uh, hum aksar dekhte hain aajkal ke you know there is a big migration happening you know california se florida uh, new york se uh, texas mein that is obviously one is because of cost but there is another uh, reason why it's happening and that reason is politics because people are actually moving away from the states where their like viewpoints are good enough to victimize them they are moving to states where they think they can speak openly so is is ko agar a broad perspective mein dekho not only is a society being ruptured down the middle between you know uh, those who are uh, siding with the deep state and those who are not but they are actually moving towards those states where they think they are so geographic uh you know uh like ideological and a political this will this country is dividing right through the middle that Th- that is why january 6th will be a stroll in the park of what can happen if donald trump ka ye jo targeting hai this keeps going on because see like everything has consequences democrat party is betting that they would uh, would not be as big a consequence of doing this because they have everyone bottled up uh, you know as like again vivek ramaswamy said bought and paid for they're all bought and paid for but they uh, they are misreading uh, because uh, they misread into what uh, like what will happen if russia was thrown off of swift well de dollarization became a reality and it is uh, like becoming more and more like a bigger reality for the world now if this happens then there will be consequences which they will they may not be able to uh, handle so Uh, so in my view i think this will take america towards an even broader uh, because if you really see the loony left is really actually dictating most it is becoming the uh, uh the front uh, uh you know uh, this thing uh, the warriors for that deep state and, and and it is absolutely loony i mean the kind of uh, stuff that is going on there is just not uh, i mean it just doesn't make any sense so Yeah, uh, so those are my I, i mean this is how i look at it sharad ji do you see the similar kind of a scenario as an indian american uh, we we have uh, we have supported trump in the past we are disappointed with democratic party for the way fascist way they are dealing with things and dealing with people like us your take on it <clears throat> so i totally agree with aditya ji's view and uh, they share view on on this um, what i feel is the american democracy and electoral college system should be questioned now and it can be only questioned with the learned people uh, like vivek ramaswamy and us uh, people who uh, like to get deep into things rather than just a uh, uh, narrative uh, so first thing is you know you uh, for a state you know if you even if you lose a state by one vote you take the entire state and then when you take the entire state you take the judiciary everything all kinds of appointment this is bloody no democracy enough enough of democracy uh, index and america being the top uh, leader that's totally bs to me this needs to be questioned unless until there is an opposition in each state and and the appointment of judges cannot be even if i lose by one vote and you know uh, i lose the state this type of bs will not work sorry for using the harsh word uh, i'm definitely angry so second thing is what this will do is a country like india where our opposition leader like rahul gandhi and a very learned friend like sam petroda here barking on the wrong tree by saying that the india is a loosely federal uh, state whereas you know center has no role or some role and states will have all the role this model will be uh, referenced in india by opposition and tukre tukre gang and this is a big going to be a big impact because when i say india india is a 140 crore type of uh, population which has a huge global impact if it if it burst so the world has to be uh, keeping that in mind so there is definitely an impact 
The third is the Supreme Court, the federal, uh, whichever is the highest authority here, should uh, they have to intervene? Because if states are allowed to run like this, then you know we can have uh, 10, 15 Americas within America, and and it is it is fast uh, coming up because the way the young population of this country are disillusioned with politics, and they have been very smartly pulled into the wokeism, their gender identity crisis. The, they have been totally, uh, uh, you know, um, led away from the nation building and being a nationalistic and patriotic, which America was for a very long time. They are more concerned about their, in, in, their own body, their own... Uh, so I think a lot of things are happening um, from a strategist perspective and the impact will be huge. And it's a very divided country at this time very divided. People are moving from California. <clears throat> My state of Tennessee had some 2,000 people moving from California. There was a big article yesterday. And they feel that, you know, within their own country, they are like, uh, there's a word they have used. I, I'm just forgetting that word. When, uh, the same thing which, you know, people feel uh, in India sometimes. Uh, so, uh, in some states. So, uh, like, especially if you go from north to a state like Dravidian state, like Tamil Nadu, you will feel very hostile in the current political setup. Same thing is happening in this country right now. People from people in California, uh, they are feeling like that. So I think uh, Trump, uh, uh, Trump situation definitely speaks that America system is now stale and, and smelling and it needs to be uh, rebooted from from scratch. Thanks. That's 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 pretty interesting to say that. You know, you expressed your anger very well. So thank you very much for opening up a uh, conversation, which is very significant. Utsarji, I will add one more bit to that. Do you think taking the cue from Deshji and Sarajji and uh, Adityji, do you think Trump's denial of election? in certain states, will, which will take away the electoral college element as well. So in the current constitution, he can't be the president. Do you think you were looking at America breaking down the middle, as Deshji is saying? Or the Republicans will say, the conservatives will say, we don't want to be part of this system anymore? So I must, uh, this is a very good question. Uh, yeah. That's staying in the minds of a lot of people, I'm sure. Uh, I should say that it's not going to be that da drastic for okay. the simple reason, for the simple reason that, as Deshi pointed out, it's not an America about Republicans and Democrats anymore. It's America about those who are part of the state apparatus and those who are not part of the state apparatus. Sure. And, you know, as, as Vivek Ramaswamy puts it more, more uh, you know, in a more baser way, uh, the, the managerial class versus the people. Uh, so, I think what is happening is that the managerial class is big enough in America to feel confident that there is nothing that can take it on. Uh, you can see the debates within the Republican Party itself. Uh, by all positions and standards, Nikki Haley is being promoted and propped up as a Republican candidate for the simple reason that the managerial class, as Vivek Ramaswamy puts it, believes that she can be their candidate. And I have a feeling that the only way they can allow Trump to be part of the election process is if he agrees to have Nikki Haley as his running mate, uh, which will put him in the same place where he was in 2016, where he will be the president or could be the president if he wins the election. But the entire apparatus around him is the managerial class. And every week you will have a leak in Washington Post and New York Times alternately. Uh, about what's going on and what they don't like about Trump. You know, the, the, the famous leaks that used to happen when Trump was a right. right. So, so I think the, the, currently the managerial class is figuring out what to do to keep things in order as they see it. And Trump is not out of that process yet. He's been given messages. Hey, you know, come on, come on, come and sit on the table. Let's talk. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's have this conversation where you and us, we, we can both work with each other. After all, you have been a president for a few years. So, so that conversation is happening right now. I think that conversation will continue to happen over the next two months. And it depends on how the, the non-managerial class responds 
to the current scenario. And I think the response will not be that drastic. I still believe that Democrats uh, have a serious chance of retaining the presidency. There could be a situation where they will just say, Biden, you did great. Uh, you, it's hard for you to walk nowadays. Um, let's have somebody else. Let's have uh, Gavin Newsom or somebody else. So things are up in the air as I see it. And 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 we we have to understand that the managerial class, the, the, the deep state, as many people in would like to call it, has a lot of confidence. And that confidence is not without reason. Now, I agree that overall, the decline of America as a country in the geopolitics of the world is going to continue to happen, as I, as I said before. But it's not going to be as cataclysmic as, as many people believe it to be. It's going to be a steady, slow. Uh, the cataclysmic collapse comes, in my opinion, another five years or eight years down the road. Uh, you know, every every big civilization goes through it. You know, in 1947 was a big cataclysmic collapse for for the Indian subcontinent. So that's still further down the road, in my opinion. Okay. Now that's that's fascinating. That you know, we believe that somewhere on the line, the deep state will not allow itself to be destroyed, self-destructive mode. Yeah, you will. They will do whatever it takes to save their whatever. Yeah. Their money, the power, the clout. <laughs> Now, let's get back to another one. You know, we, all of you talked about Vivek Ramaswamy, and he has been a fresh air, you know, in the American politics. You know, I have been following him, and I'm reading the, you know, apart from his presentations, I have been reading the comments that people make. I've never seen anybody downright condemn him. You may disagree with him, but people are seeing him as a fresh air. One of the things that I picked up from him, that how beautifully he redefined the Hindu positioning in the American political part by making some very conf very bold, very powerful and truthful statements. And I'm very glad about one thing that, you know, he, he has adopted truth as his single word campaign message. And we always, I always end up my show by saying Satyameva Jayate and if you want the truth to be successful, you've got to stand for it. So I'm very proud about that. But he has indeed redefined the Hindu positioning in which he said in one of the programs that nobody has monopoly on values. So beginning with Aditji again, how as a Satology guy, how as you know, upholder of Sanatan values, how do you feel about <clears throat> Vivek's positioning of Hindus in America and Hindu belief in America? See, America is and was always a Sanatan land, always. So Native Americans called USA before the settlers colonized it. It was known as a turtle island in English, but in in, in native language, Kawache or something, Kawache. Something, something, they always believe that the turtle upholds this Bhumi, America. Hmm. And so this is the ancient name of America is Crown Chudweep, according to Veda. European settlers tried to completely destroy the Native American culture and population by importing themselves. And the European settlers got the independence from Church of England without even consulting Native Americans. So Native Americans or Americans, original residents never got independence. This historical fact has been forgotten by everybody. Okay. So the constitution is by the settlers against the Church of England. That's a fight. King of England. That's the church. King is the Church of England. Now, coming to Vivek Ramaswamy is a breath of fresh air because he's representing the old real American values. God is everywhere. God is real. This is my, this is my best statement because all theology departments in the American universities are searching for God. They have not found God. When he says God is real, it debunks entire church propaganda. And that's why the church people in MAGA crowd are opposing him more. If he was in a Democrat party, he would be winning hands down everything. That is a is kind of a fact. He'll beat down even Gavin News. The, the thing is, Vivek Ramaswamy is a breath of fresh air. And he's coming from Republican side. I will see the Republican Party should come full heartedly behind him to make him 
it really a breath of fresh air for the usa otherwise the country will be divided thank you very much do you think this ji the vivek ramaswamy is candidacy puts a spotlight on those four or five indian american congressmen who have been almost apologetic being a hindu i think this is a very um, like very good question actually see i what see what you thought uh, giving a philip is he giving a philip to the hindu the way we are he has given right. us a voice yeah i would agree and see the thing is that um, the journey of indian americans is actually like uh, you know the uh, the coming on stage on the political stage uh, in america for indian americans is actually a journey right like it is not that like it just happens in in one like person like it has been a journey and that journey has different use or colors to this entire thing so there was uh, the initial ones were like bobby jindal and nikki haley they changed their uh, religion uh, to make sure that they were uh, you know in the race then there was these other guys who came in you know uh, like ro khanna and all those other folks they they became front for the more woke islamic kind of a like the backstage uh, uh, folks and uh, like they were playing to the gallery to the democratic gallery again they were not able to do or they were not doing things that they should have done because of political you know implications for their own self then here comes vivek ramaswamy now in all this spectrum and i see you needed a person who is well endowed in terms of uh, finances as well as intelligence and guts it is a very 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 rare combination vivek ramaswamy is one of those very rare combinations and uh, he in that sense has taken on a a stance for hinduism as being a hindu which has not happened until now before this being a hindu candidate within the republican party and being so open about it is very very rare because uh, tulsi gabbard also was there uh, although uh, she was not indian but a very strong hindu but she was not able to make that much progress despite her fantastic articulation skills and intelligence vivek ramaswamy is on a different level altogether so you needed this kind of a thing and he is setting up a stage for the next person to come who will actually be more uh, assertive about the hindu values uh, even more than vivek so we are seeing a journey uh, uh, you know in this uh, the indian americans uh, experiment with the us politics and this will go on and uh, like in my view he is a breath of fresh air because he is a very very rare combination uh, who has business who has law who has politics and who uh, who has uh, like very deep thought into the entire the like, geopolitics of the world so so i think like in uh, now so let me put it like this he is what he is because he can afford to be what he is because <laughs> intelligence and of his like finances you yeah. know you you said three words of three three things about him which are very relevant sharad ji i will sharad ji and utsad ji i'll come with a different question to you on the same topic indeed that uh, vivek ramaswamy has recently suspended his television advertising for iowa elections and suddenly the media was talking about the fact that oh my god that means he's done and pronto he comes back and says that it is a total waste of time to waste money on television advertising i'm spending money on the grassroots campaign to people and he's he's openly saying that expect a surprise <clears throat> in iowa what's your take on that because he gave a very concrete answer why he pulled out the ads from this he said it's all corporate game play i don't want to be part of that once i realized it i pulled back all the money from the tv advertising and i'm spending money where i must on the grassroots your take on that uh what's up ji 
Ah, okay. Uh, so, Vibhuti ji, I, I, you know, getting to know Vivek and uh, having spoken to him a uh, few times, I get to have a feeling that everything he's doing in this campaign is uh, an experiment with truth. To 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 put uh, to, to paraphrase uh, Mahatma Gandhi, actually, uh, in a in a very positive way, I must say. You mean to say Mohan Dasji? <laughs> <laughs> Mohan Dasji, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so so you know, I think what Vivek has been doing every step of this campaign is to is to play with the the thought of what America would do if they were told the honest truth about everything. So. He didn't care about his numbers. He didn't care about his, uh, uh, you know, his background. You know, he has been in the middle of uh, Christian evangelist uh, campaign events and proudly said that, yeah, I'm a proud Hindu and I have no issues with that. Uh, you should not have any issue with that either. Uh, and he has been absolutely, he's basically Donald Trump with 10 times the articulation and, uh, and zero times the baggage. Uh, so, so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very refreshing uh, setup. And I think what he has done in Iowa and in, in every other place is to approach his campaign as a as that, an experiment with truth. And he doesn't care about TV ads. He meets the people. He changes people's opinion. Imagine that in, in, a, in a highly polarized society. I mean, you, you will see him in the middle of a town hall where a so-called, quote-unquote, uh, gender activist comes and questions him. He gives them the mic, mic and changes their opinion because, you know, some, some of these people are so self-contradictory. So this is this is a breath of fresh air. The numbers that he's showing are not the high as high as they should be, because he also has the support of Donald Trump's supporters who are currently supporting Trump. If there were to be a situation where Donald Trump is not on the ballot anymore and Vivek is on the ballot, I can assure you he will be the top of the uh, running running team there because everybody who supports Trump supports Vivek Ramaswamy as well. I mean, there might be a few stragglers here then who don't. So I think Vivek has is going to do far better than most people think he will do. And uh, and Vivek has a great future. Uh, he's barely 40. He has made money. So he's basically the outcome of what American dream, the positives of American dreams are, without the baggage of what America has done to itself <laughs> over the last few decades. So, you know, in every way, a breath of fresh air. And I'm hoping that uh, it will lead to better future for American Hindus. I meet more young people, irrespective of their, irrespective of their political opinion, on which side of the spectrum they are on, who are inspired by Vivek Ramaswamy and his honest presentation of being a Hindu. I meet more of them than, you know, anybody I have seen before. And yeah, I have to agree with uh, Deshji that a journey from uh, Bobby Jindal to Vivek Ramaswamy is a journey of triumph for the American Hindu community. And if this trajectory continues, I have to say that uh, the, the, the White House is the limit uh, for us. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I was very proud of him when he made this statement, whether it was a debate or a press conference, where he said, I don't have to convert to any other religion to become the president of United States. That's what, that was a bold thing. That was the, that's where the character and the honesty comes out, that God lives in us. And he has been very open about it, pronouncing those thoughts that are Hindu thoughts and Sanatan thoughts. So that's, yes, Adit, do you uh, want to I wanted to make one uh, uh, the comment here. Like, uh, we shouldn't be surprised if in, the, if in 2024, the top five economies of the world, the leaders of the top five economies of the world uh, come together and three of them are Hindus. <laughs> very likely. Very likely. Go ahead, Aditya. You have to the, the, the single important change which Vivek Ramaswamy has done to Americans is that the values have no connection with religion. Right. Christian, Christianism. I'll say Christianism more. Because Christianism has defied all values. If they're really worried about values then officially declare Native Americans as the original people of this land. Declare it. And second thing I think has made a big difference is that uh, it takes a Hindu to have the courage to say the truth. Even, even Christians cannot do that. I'll give it. I'll leave it. Oh, brilliant. 
the quick thing I wanted to go with the remaining time that we have is Indian elections. Now, Indian elections, uh, everybody says Modi is a guaranteed winner. And they are also talking about more than 370 seats. Some talk about 400. And the, 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 the ridiculous way the Congress party is campaigning against Ram Mandir and all. I have a specific question to all of you and to all the voters in India. Is that after knowing, you know, we live in a digital era where the, you know, news travels faster than the speed of lightning, if I may say so euphemistically speaking. Everybody now knows that ever since Congress party has been totally anti-Hindu in their work board to legislations, to protection of minorities, they have been totally anti-Hindu. The question is, how does, who still votes for the Congress party? Look at it this way, in this 21st century, it is 21st century, and you people are still talking about caste census, whereas we have already stepped out of the caste fiasco completely. So the question is, who votes for them? What is the future of Congress party? What is Rahul Gandhi doing? What is Sam Petroda doing? As somebody said that they are your friend. What is Sam Petroda talking about Ram Bhagwan? So everything that is Hindu, they are totally against it. Who votes for them? So, uh, like I think let's start with uh, Sharadji because I think uh, he was missed out on the last topic. No, no he so, chose not he... to say. He passed on the question to Sharadji. <laughs> so, okay, Sharadji, you take over. Uh, so, Sharadji, <laughs> why don't you start first? <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Like, you share your views about Vivek Ramaswamy as well as this topic then. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll be very quick. So, for Vivek, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy to me is what Viveka, where Vivekanandji left. Uh, you know, he came, preached, he left, right? The influence was gone. Um, then Hinduism was mostly known uh, from the uh, either um, uh, that uh, that uh, Oregon yogi. What what was that name? Uh, Oregon yogi was there, and then um, so <clears throat> Vivek brought Hinduism to the mainstream, right? Mainstream where we are not only seen as a land of yoga, mystic thing, but we are also talking on the serious aspect, which is the uh, philosophy and and the. Uh, a lot of other things. So, so that is one of the contribution I think uh, Vivek has, and since he has the money, he can he can be a long player. So that's uh, uh, that's all uh, regarding the election ad. Ad you said uh, Vibhutiji in that question, uh, Vivek himself said that forty two percent of his voters are first time donors for the Republican. So he knows where to put his money from the uh, campaign perspective. So and that's why he has left the TV and and focus on the grassroots. Uh, so that is one. Now, regarding the Indian election, uh, very quickly, who votes for the Congress? Well, we, our own relatives vote for the Congress. I have many relatives in Delhi I met and I was shocked. Uh, and they uh, have all kinds of uh, uh, relatives and friends. They have all kinds of surname like like uh, Mishra, Trivedi, Pandey, Singh. Right. Uh, and that's an indication for you, uh, Vibhutiji, to understand. I'm not going to uh, the others and others. All these first names which I have mentioned, they vote for Congress. They have their own secular understanding, especially the St. Stephen JNU uh, and an entire uh, Tamil Nadu brigade. There is a huge population within Hindus who vote for Congress. They think that uh, this Mandir politics is actually bringing India backward. Now, unless or until we as an influencer from U.S. keep on, uh, you know, uh, using our platform and our position in this country. And this is where I'm wearing this, this band, which I have been asked by the, by the party to work on, uh, you know, people like Sam Petro that should be countered because he has created a elitism and, and a scientific aura around him with his, you know, black beard and, and red uh, hair. Uh, you know, we have to counter that, that modernism doesn't mean only, you know, Western understood secularism, right? That's where uh, we as an influencer have to work. And I'll reach out to you all uh, on, on that regard. Uh, I had a, a lot of discussion with the leadership there. So who votes for the Congress? Our own relatives and friends vote for the Congress. Thank you. Deshi, now your turn. Thank you. Uh, so I was uh, like in India last and like one of the uh, you know, interesting uh, thing was that I was talking to a group of my friends 
uh, very accomplished like uh, you know they have made it in life and they are uh, like doing extremely well uh, one of them like is a very experienced and uh, big you know investment banker i was talking and he said well uh, india is it is at such a state of economy that even if there is a change of government nothing much will change so that was his statement and so uh, there were many uh, so that reminded me of that uh, you know like when i was growing up there were a lot of people who would say that uh, you know british government was actually better than the indian government at that time yeah but you know like- people just totally forget you know they are lulled by the change that has happened lulled by uh, the immensity of where they are like at that point in time and they uh, they have this kind of a nostalgia about something else which is like fully not true so uh, so basically like what i'm trying to say is that people who are voting for congress are those people who have forgotten what it was to be under congress and they think uh, like everything uh, uh, will be the same irrespective of who the uh, the government is not understanding that uh, the freebie politics the corruption the undermining of the indian national polity and uh, like uh, breaking up india in so many different ways that will happen like that's one thing the other thing is that congress and uh, you know these non bjp or anti modi uh, gang including uh, within india and outside have followed a template that has been used within the us and the west which is to villainize the other person so just as Put- uh, like putin is villainized trump is villainized they make um, they normalize abuse they normalize uh dehumanization of the other person that's what they do so so there is a big gang which actually makes fun of modi which will like bring down modi which will abuse modi just because it is a cool thing to do we have seen what happens in the stand ups we have seen how and stand ups is not just like one person like doing something it is actually an industry somebody is paying for that and somebody is actually pushing that up and only a specific kind of a narrative is being uh, uh, shared there so basically the way the culture like including the movies and all that is being shaped is basis the uh, you know abuse uh, uh, humiliation and um, you know like mockery of a certain viewpoint and certain people those are the people uh, who are the ones who will actually vote against modi and for congress because they they have been so taken in by all this that it's very very tough to even change their mindset even when you put facts on place uh, like on the ground oh. it, it doesn't really change much for them oh. Oh. utsav ji your thought on that well i must say that you know 2024 looks positive for modi so far but anything can happen in indian polity uh there is a, a big section of people in india who are across the age spectrum across the uh, urban rural spectrum across who have different reasons to not invest in modi or uh, the the direction that modi is taking india which is a civilizational uh, state a modern civilizational state that is in continuum with the ancient hindu civilization that is bharat or india so many people have issues with that uh, and they gen- they have issues with that because they have different interests in mind i mean there are huge sections of population in india that genuinely believe that there should be a mughal rule back in india uh, or or what they see is the <laughs> is the essence of what the mughal rule was should be back in india there is a big section in india that believes that india was wonderful under the british uh, the british did not convert enough people to christianity or, or 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 whatever catholicism and that process should continue and 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 it it's a different india that they wish envision there is another india that believes that there were far more swiss bank accounts being opened under a previous leadership uh, every month and uh, 
that process should restart. Why shouldn't there uh, be a lot of Swiss bank accounts uh, opened every month? So India is 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 a, the world's most populous country with with a lot of people with a lot of different interests, interests that are not always necessarily good for people of India, but are still from the people of India. So they don't want Modi. Why why would somebody who which, who would want to bring back Aurangzeb in Delhi want to see Modi there? Why would somebody who would banish all Hindu festivals, uh, like it has been done in, in Mizoram or in some parts of Manipur, want to see Modi back? So th this is a different, you know, we have to understand this. You have to explain it in these terms that Modi at this point of time may not be the perfect leader of India, but he's the best that he ha we can have to represent the civilizational continuum and the revival that we, we are trying to achieve. <clears throat> And those who don't want that uh, will not want that. It's it's a battle of ideas, and we have to reach out to the youth of India with these ideas and and share it with them. Uh, I always, you know, people always tell me regarding this whole Ram Temple uh, Ayodhya Temple thing. People ask me, so what do you when you know when it was not that cool when the Supreme Court hadn't given the opinion on on the Ram Temple? What do you think about the Ram Temple movement? Like they look at it as if it's like the worst thing that could be done in politics. And I'm like, I agree. The Ram Temple should have been in Ayodhya in 1947, literally a week after the British left India. Because it was, it's was it been overdue since 1947, when you actually took care of your own destiny, started taking care of your own destiny. So I agree. Now, the Ram Temple issue should not have existed in 1992. It should have been solved in 1947 itself. And then people are surprised. They're like, oh, I thought you would say something different when you were being critical of this. <laughs> so, so... So this is the, this is a, we have to give a different vision, and that vision will come from people like us, because you know somebody like Deshji, everybody sitting here, has put in the effort to research, and we should not be afraid to express ourselves because we believe in the in the you know efficacy of that research and the truth of where we are coming from. So I would put it at that. Thank you very much, Aditji. I will add two elements to this, and. Uh will head out on a different matter altogether with a short comments from all of you. Do you think uh, violence will be the final resort of enemies of Modi? Very much. I think the West, I mean, the American and other our Western countries are very much looking for that scapegoat in India, which will start this process. And Rahul Gandhi seems to be the one. But I'll just add to the last point, one yes. still line only. The people of India are politically the most savvy people on the planet today. So I will leave it up to the people and they will put up the best candidate based on their actual work they have put on the ground. Okay, that's very nice to know. The, the final thing that I wanted to talk to you about is your thought on, uh, you know, Modi ji winning the seats. I'm not going into the inter international politics and geopolitics, but in terms of numbers, I'm a sportsman and I believe that never take your opposition for granted. True. I personally do not like when people begin to chant, oh, 400 seats will be, 375 I said, don't do that. Because that is a put off in more ways than one. So what would be your, your one line sentence, one advice to BJP campaign committee or Prime Minister Modi would be to maintain a particular strategy uh, be going forward in 2024 with Ram Mandir inauguration happening on January 22. It's a bigger event than January 26 this time. Uh, the way Congress party is running amok, it, Temple politics and all that. Ye, ye nangi ho gaya. Mere visarche to Congress party nangi ho gayi. Ye Ram ji ke saath larne ke karan. Wo Maryada Pushottam Ram ke saath lade hai. Wo bilkul chuhe ki tarah marenge. Mere mera to mera ye personal vichar hai. Your thoughts, each one of you. And I start with Desh ji, then Utsav ji, Sharad ji, and Adit ji. Uh, so I think like if we like again, I'm not going to like put those uh, numbers but like given what has happened in the last uh, last state elections uh, the victory was overwhelming and uh, abhi ram mandir baki hai 
राम मंदिर को अगर ऐड कर दो तो देन थिंग्स चेंज यू नो ड्रामेटिकली बट इफ देर इज वन यू नो सजेशन दैट आई वुड हैव इज बी वेरी 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 केयरफुल अबाउट द सिक्योरिटी about the security of the country and security of the leaders because with uh, newland and uh, you know uh, blinken meeting the isi chief and the park army chief and the escalation of uh, things that are happening uh, you know the terror attacks which have uh, just escalated in the last uh, couple of months at least uh, uh, you know against india uh that actually is not a good uh, you know uh, sign for india but that but that uh, modi ji has not responded the way he did for pulwama and uh, uri also shows that he is trading that for something even bigger even a bigger action because agar अगर नॉर्मल स्टेट होता नॉर्मल टाइम होता तो उन्होंने अब तक रिस्पॉन्ड कर दिया होता इन सब के लिए उन्होंने रिस्पॉन्ड नहीं किया क्योंकि उन्होंने रिस्पॉन्ड नहीं किया इसका मतलब ये है कि देर इज समथिंग यून बिगर दैट इज एट स्टेक राइट नाउ और दैट इज इन द प्लानिंग राइट नाउ सो यस आई विल लाइक सजेस्ट दैट यू नो सिक्योरिटी ऑफ द कंट्री एंड सिक्योरिटी ऑफ द लीडर्स इज पैरामाउंट राइट नाउ सो बी वेरी केयरफुल Utsav ji I would your advice the, your advice to BJP yes, and so the, the first advice, advice I would give is that nobody nobody should take 2024 for granted in fact it is the farthest uh, from reality as i can put it uh, there is always going to be anti incumbency uh, especially because this is the third term that prime minister modi is going for uh, ram tem mandir is only going to have a limited impact because it has been it it's it's the end result of a long journey and so people are already satisfied satiated with the result it's not going to be something that will so everybody who is part of the election process in india should consider 2024 as a challenge and not leave any stone unturned to get to a full majority i would not even say more than that if you can achieve full majority it would be a big success for prime minister modi number 2 i i and this is the part where i i think uh, they she clearly alluded to prime minister modi and his team and and india now should think like a geopolitical power don't just go for short term uh, tactical victories uh, and they are beginning to do that they are beginning to do that go for long term and mid term strategic victories <clears throat> because now you know after having won those short term tactical victories that india has been trying to achieve over the last 5 to 8 years those mid term and long term strategies victories strategic victories are very much in view so i believe that they are thinking like that i hope they are thinking like that uh, play the long game as they say uh, yeah. because they are ready for that they are ready for that they needed the the they needed the uri they needed the balakots uh, to show up and 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 prepare the people for the long long innings and now they need to play for the long innings the the removal of article 370 in jammu and kashmir was a, a fact absolutely fantastic step in that direction it must continue because you never know when the clouds come back again and when the sun stops shining so make the most of it good sharad ji so my uh, quick answer would be uh, so since i am a number guy i will give 347 347 number with two caveats first is if he handles maharashtra and nitish kumar well in bihar um, he will sweep the north india and then to face the north south divide if he agrees to my suggestions which have been going on for almost 9 months now uh, if he moves the pmo office winter capital and summer capital not the capital of india but the pmo of india sits in chennai and at least he announces that from december to feb when delhi is all fogged if he moves the prime minister office with all his official to chennai the entire south citadel will be broken south is all sound nobody has uh, put on his boxing glove and gone inside and fought with them so that means the politician not the people the the entire karnataka 
and and to some extent tamil nadu will start not it won't crumble Im- immediately but the fight has never happened the fight the direct one on one fight with modi and the dravidian parties have never happened and i have been suggesting tweeting prime minister office you announced because there is a huge uh, sign of you know feeling uh, you know delhi is north this aryan and all this crap this has to be countered and and to get that 347 this is important and lastly a uh, security is is a very important part i think with deji mentioned uh, if you see chinese have hired uh something like what russian did with with that army guy chinese have had some uh some external agency to save their fleet in red sea so security is playing a big role and uh the recent statement by mea and uh, ajit doval's team regarding security and directly pinpointing pannu and cia relationship is i see a huge huge change which india will have in 2024 and there will be impact Thank you, Adit Ji. Your last word on this. My, you know, I'm a not a cephalologist, nor I understand elections very well. I'll be very honest with you. That come Sarath Ji and Utsav Ji and Desh Kapoor Ji do very well. And you. लेकिन लेकिन suggestion क्या होगा? Strategic advice क्या होगी? Focus on Hindu issues. Number one, security. Number two, focus on secular Hindus. There are a lot of Hindus who are secular. who don't want any type of fanaticism against anyone focus on them focus on religious hindus focus on because muslimano pe focus whatever you do they'll not vote for you whatever you do even if you give them cash in their bank still they'll not vote for you focus on secular hindus focus on secular uh, strong hindus focus on the ram temple focus on security if possible beat pakistan through, drop 100 bombers missiles if you can please <laughs> drop it and drop one from my side proactively tackle american and western attacks crowdfunding yeah and <laughs> do all those things and so which you can get the hindu votes remove rohingyas announce policy send them back to bangladesh they are going to andaman nicobar throw them out of andaman nicobar send them to malaysia do everything possible you can do to please the secular hindus and uh, hindus which are more hindu than other people so then we would be win the elections 100% so it's, it's your your suggestions are very welcome they accept to one with the bomb pakistan as a jaipur dialogue i would say that the view expressed by the opinion maker is his own not that it does not we don't subscribe to that we need not necessarily subscribe to that so it's wonderful to have a chat this morning with you we generally do it on sathology the v5 assemble there so thank you very much to all the viewers who are listening today happy new year let's make it a different and i always do one thing in my new year i always say thing that i did not do last year which i wanted to do i will do it now so you know instead of resolutions do something that you wanted to do and you couldn't or you have been wanting to do but you can't try something it makes a difference desh ji thank you very much utsav ji wonderful to listen to hear your unique opinions sharad ji uh, you are a new warrior as sam petrora is your friend of yours so tell him apna original naam to le aao kam se kam and arjit ji thank you very much for joining today satyameva jayate happy new year see you again very soon thank you namaste